Health First Top Doctors podcast. Today, we're joined by leading endocrinology and diabetes consultant, Dr. Dipesh Patel. World Diabetes Day 2003 highlighted valuable breakthroughs in diabetes treatment. If you visit the website for leading diabetes charity, Diabetes UK, you can see the facts. From the discovery of insulin 100 years ago, which has saved millions of lives around the world, to people with type 1 diabetes being able to make their own insulin, it's now possible for type 2 diabetes to go into remission. Today, we're taking an in-depth look at diabetes management in present, as well as what's in store for the future. Good morning, Dr. Patel. Hello, good morning. It's really nice to have you. It's a pleasure. Um, so could you tell us more about yourself and your work? Yes, so I'm a consultant in diabetes endocrinology in London. Uh, I work in a London teaching hospital. Uh, I also do research at the university in, in North Central London. Great, thank you so much. Um, okay, so uh, let's get started with the questions. Um, what factors need to be managed in people with diabetes and why? I mean, that's a really good question to start with. Diabetes is defined by raised blood glucose. So we focus on, on that. But, and I, I tell, when I tell people about diabetes, be it if they're medical students or other consultants, specialist colleagues, we know that diabetes causes problems with small blood vessels. That's blood vessels in the eyes, uh, in the kidneys and the feet, and they can cause problems with vision, with kidney uh, function and problems with numbness in the feet. Uh, and it can also uh, affect large blood vessels, uh, leading to uh, increasing the risk of stroke, heart problems, and uh, vascular problems in the feet. So problems with blood supply in the feet. And how we prevent those small and large vessel problems is looking at a variety of parameters, not just glucose. So glucose reduction, over many months and many years. So effective glucose reduction will reduce the chances of patients developing eye problems, kidney problems, and foot problems, but may not necessarily prevent them effectively in preventing problems with heart attack, stroke, uh, peripheral vascular disease, and those are sorts of things we want our patients to be protected from, essentially. So apart from glucose, so uh, what we do is we... Uh, we look at uh, average blood glucose measurements, and that's a, a blood test called glycated hemoglobin, or otherwise known as HbA1c, and that gives us an average of blood glucose over the preceding three months. So that's what we look at, uh, and we try to individualize the target for, it, for our patients to prevent them getting the eyes, the kidneys, and the feet problems. In addition to that, things like blood pressure, cholesterol, weight management, kidney function, those things are really, really important to prevent the other aspects as we, what I mentioned before. Uh, our patients will have and should have sort of eye screening and kidney urine tests every one year. And they should also be uh, have advice regarding smoking cessation if they're smokers uh, and having support with that. So that essentially there are sort of eight or nine key aspects of care processes for patients with diabetes that are really important. And they're the basics. So every patient who is living with diabetes, be it type 1 diabetes, who need insulin or type 2 diabetes, should have these basic sort of levels of care in place. And that's usually provided by the primary care practitioner. Thank you. I think the more I... Um... You know, the more I work here at Top Doctors, the more I realize how all encompassing diabetes is. And, how, you know, you know, it's serious. But then when you really like look into it, it's like, wow, it, it, it really does affect so many parts of the body, you know, and can have a really serious impact on quality of life. And so you're absolutely right, you know, and, and it's you know, those complications are scary. Mm -hmm. They affect individuals and their families and their loved ones. Uh, but, you know, we can prevent a lot of those 
and keep people healthy. So we should be going towards keeping people healthy rather than trying to sort of treat diseases that are you know difficult to control. Mm-hmm. That's that's great to know. That's that's really reassuring. So um, how does today's management of diabetes compare to the methods and technology that was available in the past? Uh, again, a really good question. And uh, we could talk about this all day um, <laughs> because you know the management of diabetes, both type 2 diabetes and type 1, has really revolutionized, certainly in my career, uh, uh, and uh, certainly starting with type 2 diabetes, I'd probably think about we know that once you have diabetes you may not have diabetes long life long so we can reverse uh diabetes what we call remission of diabetes Uh, and that we hadn't known about that for very long and it was a study from the uk a few years ago that was published in the lancet or the the direct study that really showed us that that is possible and that is that is uh we can we can uh essentially achieve remission in a lot of our patients early on Mm -hmm. when they're diagnosed so it's in the first few years certainly there are a lot of patients that can remit or reverse later on but they're again they're fewer and fewer but certainly in the earlier years certainly in the first five years seven years you know there there is a possibility so these things i guess need to be acknowledged and discussed uh with with the sort of healthcare professionals or what are the chances of individuals being able to reverse this rather than just living healthy with it for the rest of their lives, essentially. And and the way uh, the tools we've used to try to reverse diabetes are very low calorie diets. So people are probably aware of that sort of 800 kilocalorie diets uh, and slow food reintroduction has been shown to be effective. There are other methods also that uh, are good at trying to reverse diabetes, such as intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating. So we know we know a lot about what we can do at the earlier stages in in in, in management. Clearly, it's be- with all these things, it's best to know your patient, know the person living with diabetes, and know what they want, what their priorities are, and what worries them, actually. So that's in terms of the early stages. Certainly, the treatments of type 2 diabetes have also progressed. Our previous treatments have, have essentially in some people led to abnormally low blood glucoses. And now we have lots of treatments that don't cause that. We have better treatments that help weight management. We know that three quarters to uh, uh, and above of our patients are overweight or living with obesity. And we know the mo- more recent medications what we've all heard about are effective, not just in diabetes management, but also help in weight management. We have some great treatments uh, that improve and prevent heart disease and kidney disease. Okay, So we've got some really good treatments that prevent complications, help people living longer and, and remaining healthy. And then just turning to type 1 diabetes, so where, there, where there's a shortage of insulin, insulin is the mainstay of treatment. And this is the minority of diabetes, so it's estimated to be only 10% of all cases have type 1 diabetes. Uh, and we know we've got very good much better insulins that that are usually injected. We now know that injecting very small amounts of insulin using a pump device is very effective for some for some of our patients for better control and less what we call hypoglycemia, which is low blood glucose levels. And we've now got technology. We've got sensors. So it, it, in your arm, we can put a little sensor in, and it can continuously monitor diabetes levels without having to prick the finger all the time and warn patients when the when the levels are escalating or get or getting uh, you know dangerously low uh, to warn patients early of that we're moving to the realms of the artificial pancreas and that's coming to the uk it's well it's actually here wow. uh, it's, it's about implementing it in the nhs so that's a real reality over the next five years so this external artificial pancreas in technical terms it's called a hybrid closed loop system where the sensor talks to the pump that gives the insulin in a sense and really helps people living with type 1 diabetes not having to make all those you know major decisions minute by minute hour by hour that really burdens them uh, in, in in living with this condition 
Yeah, absolutely. I have so a loads of major, major improvements in, in many areas. And, and hopefully, you know, one day we're looking towards curing diabetes. And we're a bit, a bit of a way off yet, but, you know, that's in the foreseeable future, we hope. Yeah, that's that's amazing. That's and it's so positive and encouraging to hear that. You know, I have a few friends that have uh, type one diabetes, or I've been around people that have to, you know, monitor their blood sugar and use the prick on their fingers, and yeah, just a oh, constant like a burden in some senses, you know, for them. So yeah, that's it's it sounds great. It sounds really really positive. Um, so in regards to the the methods that are available at the moment, um, how have they made an improvement to people's quality of life? Well, that's really, really important. We want people to live longer, but also uh, live longer healthily. So thankfully, uh, we are getting better at managing diabetes and preventing our people patients living with diabetes uh, without getting problems with their vision, without getting problems with kidney problems, kidney function problems, without getting heart problems, without getting amputations. But remember, I think the key, a key factor here is a lot of people are developing type 2 diabetes at an earlier age. Okay, and that's partly to do with genetics and partly to do with obesity. And we know the longer somebody has diabetes, even if it's relatively well controlled, they're more likely to develop sort of problems later on. So what we want to do is prevent it, reverse it, and make it very easy to manage for the individuals. So all these things together, and it's obviously not just about the therapies, but it's about engagement with the healthcare professionals. It's about a journey together and, and helping them live as healthy a life uh, as they possibly can. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping to say this is, it is working. It is working. Uh, clearly, there's a, a long way to go. There are some patients that se don't seem to have as good access to healthcare, uh, certainly in the UK. And that's something that we're all mindful of and trying to perhaps alter our services to allow that, you know, leveling up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, coming from Manchester, it's a little bit different to other areas of the, um, and a specific area of Manchester as well. It's different to the, the city. And yeah, absolutely. I think that's really important as well. And, and working in London, we see that vast array of diversity, yeah. you know, both ends of the spectrum. And it's really, uh, it, it's, I guess it's interesting from a, from a diabetes perspective and a pathology perspective, but it's also uh, challenging. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's have a look. So what's new in diabetes management? I mean, we discussed it a little bit before, but yeah, what, what is new? So I think prevention. I think uh, we're now, in years gone by, that patients, when they, once they were diagnosed, they were sent off to sort of structured education programs to, to tell them what, what it was going to be like living with diabetes, albeit trying to live healthily with diabetes, yeah. but living with it for the, for the foreseeable future. Now we, we really have changed the narrative to talk about remission, reversal, and how we do that through weight loss, how that's achievable, but also how that's sustainable. Uh, so we've got lots of uh, lifestyle uh, uh, tools that we can use, but also medications. We've all heard about the medications that have been repurposed, the injectable medications that have been re repurposed for weight loss. We've been using them for well over 10 years for managing people with diabetes and helping them with weight management. So these, these are really, I think, important tools. Uh, and again, also we're looking at sort of targeting medicines a bit, a bit better mm -hmm. and trying to individualize as best we can our treatments so patients have uh, the better responses. We can't always tell who's going to respond to what, but we want to go towards that sort of slightly more precision medicine compared to try this one, then try that one, and then try that one, which, you know, you could be frustrated as a healthcare professional, but also from a patient perspective, if things aren't working, you, you would really question the utility of what, what you're doing and, and you know why you're engaging in, in certain you know services. So it's really trying to get the right answer earlier. 
uh, in certainly type two, type one diabetes, I'd say clearly the artificial pancreas, the hybrid closed loop system is is here. It's here. So we're going to be seeing that rolling out over the next coming years uh, in the UK. Uh, we'll see hopefully other innovations, implantable devices to deliver insulin. We're getting uh, the first of the pharmaceutical companies actually uh, trialing immunotherapy. We know type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune problem, which just means the immune system attacks the insulin-producing cells in the pancreas. And we now, there are trials underway to try to retard that process, slow that process down mm -hmm. to try to prevent the progression of type 1 diabetes. That's, I think, a really exciting area. And there are cellular solution sort of stem cell therapies and other you know uh sort of cellular approaches to actually helping to not just reverse but cure the underlying problem if possible if possible so it's, i think it's a really exciting area to be in uh whether you're a type one specialist or a type two specialist my expertise is more in type two than type one but i think in equal in equal measure it's it's an exciting area uh uh and uh you know there's a lot of hope for our patients that if we have these, um, you know, exciting treatments now in the next few years, we're going to be making even more progress. Yeah, absolutely. The future sounds bright. It really does. That's so nice to hear. Just like, it's really nice to feel positive about, about it all, you know, definitely. So, um, we mentioned a little bit before about the cure, a cure, do you think it's coming soon? <laughs> is or is there a cure? I'm going to be gazing through my crystal ball here. Uh, <laughs> I, I, it's difficult to say. We're making progress. We're yeah. making, and that's all we're we're all hoping for as a community in diabetes mm -hmm. for a cure. Certainly to type one diabetes. The immunotherapies may give us some, you know, insights into that. There may be some cellular uh, advances also coming. So that's what we're we're we're, we're working towards. How far we are out, I think it's difficult to predict. Yeah, how sure. it's difficult to predict. And type two diabetes, it's about prevention. We know patients who develop type two diabetes, uh, we we'll know how to 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 essentially measure their sort of mild levels of high glucose, what we call pre-diabetes, for many years beforehand. So we're catching these people earlier mm -hmm. and trying to reverse them back to normal sort of glucose uh levels and in that it's all about uh you know lifestyle measures understanding the genetic predisposition that you people may know in their families and you know achieving weight loss through lifestyle measures that are sustainable and in some cases using medications to help them get to where they need to be so i think it is bright i think the newer therapies are going to be even better than we have today uh, you know, I wouldn't, you know, during my career, I've seen this, as I've said, countless number of major advances in diabetes, and it's a real uh, privilege and exciting area to be working in. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for all that really, really useful information. Um, you know, I'm sure it's going to be really handy for all of our listeners um, and anybody that is interested in seeking treatment. Um, so, uh, again, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been, it's been a pleasure. No, it was an absolute pleasure. Uh, very happy to, to, to have these sorts of discussion and, and to, you know, hopefully help patients in, in the sort of, uh, 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 indirect way. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So if you're looking for expert diabetes treatment, visit Dr. Patel's profile at topdoctors.co.uk to arrange a consultation. Mm -hmm.